Now my goal for this channel is not to build up an audience to just publish a book. If I don't ever publish a book, this channel would have still been a success because I have connected with all of you through it and I'm so thankful for that. So I thought it would be super fun though to share with you all the story of how this YouTube channel got started and kind of talk about the calling I felt called to in my life and how that ties into this channel as well as kind of sharing with you how all of that connects with homemaking as well. So the fun thing is that I'm filming this video currently. I think I've had this YouTube channel for over at least two and a half years, which is so crazy. I have been so excited to film this video, but I'm also feeling a little bit nervous because I've never done a video where I've just sat down. I think it kind of told a long story about myself. So I'm really hopeful that this video won't be boring. I'm not probably not going to have a ton of shots throughout this video and so maybe you just want to set your phone or your computer up and do something else while you listen to me tell the story. With all that being said, I'm really hopeful that if any of you women are out there like myself who have felt super multi-passionate, wanting to do a hundred different things, not sure which one to pursue, having all of these different passions and different people that you would like to reach out to and not knowing how to combine them together or how this is actually meant to be used in your life. I hope that this video maybe encourages you because that has been me up until maybe the last year or so. So let's dive into the story. Originally, and this might be confusing, you might wonder how this ties into the YouTube channel, but the story actually starts back when I think I was about nine years old and I wrote my first book. And this book was written on about five pieces of kitty cat stationery. And yet through writing this little story, I discovered this love that I had for writing. And it was at that moment that I decided by the time I am 18, I'm going to have a published book. And so while I have always dreamed of one day getting married and one day having a family, my biggest goal and my biggest desire all of growing up was to be a writer. And so by the time I was about 17 years old, I had probably written over 200 college ruled notebook sized books that were mystery fictional stories. And it was just my passion. It was what I did in all my free time. I just loved expressing myself. I loved telling stories and I loved trying to connect with people through writing. And so it was around this time, maybe about 16, when my earnest desire to write mystery fictional stories kind of dwindled out and I realized that as much as I still love to write, I needed to write about something I actually knew something about and murdering people and mysteries was really not what I knew much about <laughs> and at the time I was kind of becoming more of a Christian and I wanted to write about more things that I just had experienced myself. And I didn't know what that was. And so my writing really turned more into just journaling. It was journaling when I was learning my Bible. It was journaling what was going on in my life. And it was writing more short stories that were more a little bit things that I had experienced myself. So come about 17, I met my husband. And at 18, we started dating. By 19, I was getting married. And by 20, I was having 20 or 21. I had our first baby. And so within that time, really, my writing just turned more into writing little Facebook posts and journaling. And yet it was still something I loved. It was my favorite way to express how I was feeling. It was my favorite way to get emotions out. And it was just a really good creative outlet that I loved. And so I still dreamed of writing. And yet during all this process from like the age of about 16, <laughs> I started researching how to publish a book. And I learned that things are not quite like they were back in like the 1950s where maybe you just send a manuscript in and you could get it published. I learned so much more was about now, do you have demand for it? Do you have an audience that would actually want to read it? How big of a following do you have? All of these things. And so publishers actually know whether your book is going to be anticipated and bought. And so I realized that my, you know, 20 to 50 followers on Facebook that were all relatives who were probably not a big enough audience to ever impress a publisher. And so I decided instead that I needed to create an audience of people who would actually be interested in what it was that I wanted to write. 
Growing up though, we didn't have Facebook, we didn't have television, we didn't watch movies, we didn't have Instagram, we didn't really do YouTube. I was very unfamiliar with all these things. They had always not been allowed growing up, which I think now as a parent is pretty awesome. <laughs> but all that being said, at about 17 years old, I got Facebook so I could build up my audience and so that I could stalk my now husband, which worked out pretty well. <laughs> and yet I really still didn't know exactly how it was that I was supposed to, to create this audience to read my very desirable books that I was one day going to write. So, Obviously, I turned 18 and I did not have a book published, which was very sad. So, things kind of progressed and I tried a lot of different things during this time. I've always been creative, I've loved anything creative, I've loved anything that connects with other people and that kind of expresses the way you feel. And so, during this time, I tried to start an Etsy store. I tried to create a Bible journal. I tried to write a devotional. I tried to start a Facebook group of other women that I could connect with. And all of these things were just, they just did not work. It was just not going well. And so during this time, probably around the time I got married, I started watching this YouTuber and I just found her so motivating. Everything about her, she was constantly growing, constantly improving her life, she was doing things around her home. She was just someone that was constantly improving herself and striving to be a better Christian, a better wife, a better, better mother. And I remember as I watched her kind of thinking, wouldn't that be amazing to be able to impact someone in the way that she's impacted me? It was kind of just this pipe dream that started to emerge of like, wow, it'd be really fun to have a YouTube channel and just kind of do this as like a creative hobby. Maybe I could build up this audience so that Brett's again when I write this book that I don't know what it would even be about, I could present it to them. And so it was just this pipe dream. And then I kind of had this realization one day like, there's no one keeping me from starting this YouTube channel except for myself and except for the fact that I don't want to be embarrassed when it doesn't go anywhere. And so I talked to my husband and kind of asked him about it. He was like, yeah, I think you should do it if you want. That sounds cool. And I was like, well, that's kind of neat that he thought it would be cool too. He didn't like make fun of the idea or something. And then, so I started praying about it. I started praying all the time about it, that God would give me a sign. And while I'm not 100% an advocate for printing out a fleece, it's like a biblical term, I have done it before and sometimes it seemed very clear that God was the one giving me these answers and other times I look back and I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I just really wanted that to happen. And so the sky was blue that day. But I do think God used this this one time. I was driving home from my mom's house. It was like a two hour drive back to our place. It was shortly after I had had our first child and I had been praying all day, Lord, if you want me to start this YouTube channel, give me a name. That can be the sign. Give me a name for this YouTube channel. And I'm driving home and, I, and it's late at night and I'm like, I have not been able to think of a name. No name will work. The vintage rose will not work. Sarah will not work. I'm driving home and I looked up and there was like this insurance sign. I'm pretty, was, pretty sure it was an insurance sign on the side of the highway and it said, it matters. And I thought, because it matters. No one will know that I basically stole the name off of an insurance company. And <laughs> so the amazing thing, and this is why I definitely think as much as I go back and forth on the whole fleece thing, I really do think God used this was that at the time, I had no clue what mattered. If someone were to ask me, why did you name your channel because it mattered? I would have literally had to say, because I saw it on a sign. I didn't know what mattered. I didn't know what I was talking about on my channel that would actually matter. And yet, that's what I decided to name the channel. And it's so amazing now because of where this channel has gone to and what it is that I speak about. And I just am amazed now and totally think it was an act of God. So. Progressing forward, <laughs> um, I started this YouTube channel having no clue what I was going to do, but knowing very clearly my tendencies. I have heard this explained once, and I think it's such a good illustration. This lady said, imagine there's this football court, and you are at one side, and you have like 10 bowling balls that you need to get to the other side of the court. And you grab one, and you carry it maybe half the way, and you set it down, and you turn around, and you go back, and you get another one, and you take it a third of the way, and you get another one, maybe you take it a fourth of the way. 
but you never ever once make one ball get all the way to the other side of the court. And she compared this to people who are always starting new things, who are all excited about it at first, who really are sure this is gonna be the ball, they're gonna get to the other side of the court, and yet halfway, they give up, and they turn around, and then they go and grab another ball, they get another idea, and they start to pursue that. And because of that, they never experience success. They never experience the satisfaction you get from seeing a job all the way through. And I realized as I heard this illustration, this is me to a T. This is always how I've been. I've started so many different things. I've tried so many different things and they've never worked. Sometimes ideas aren't going to work. The reality, the reality is it's not going to work. And yet when you pursue a goal all the way to the end where you can look back and say, I did my very best. I tried my very hardest. Whether you see tons of success in it or not, you still have the sense of success. Like you've proven to yourself that you can be dedicated to something. And so with this YouTube channel, it was the first thing that I have ever done where I said, whether I experience success or I experience no success, I will post diligently every single week, hopefully close to every single week for an entire year. I will do it for a year dedicated. It doesn't matter if I have great ideas or if I have to post a crappy video. I will post every week. And so I started this YouTube channel for a couple of different reasons. I started it, yes, I wanted to have an audience that I could maybe write a book to someday. But also I wanted to prove to myself that I could be dedicated because up until this point, I don't think I ever had. And so <laughs> for an entire year, I filmed on my iPhone not very good quality. I would spend probably two hours every time I sat down to film just trying to get the lighting right. It was so frustrating. The quality was so hard to make look really good unless it was a perfectly lit day and a perfectly lit room. And during this time as well, we sold our home and we moved in with my parents and so that we could remodel this house. And so <laughs> I was trying to film. I was super embarrassed in front of the camera. I felt like such a just an embarrassment as I would sit in my sister's room hoping my mom and dad wouldn't hear me talk to my phone that I had stacked on like 10 books trying to create a tripod. And so the very first video that I did was a meal prep video. So I filmed this video and I had no subscribers. <laughs> and so I had all my siblings follow me. I had all of them like the video instantly after posting it. And then I shared it on Facebook with my 20 followers there. And it was so embarrassing. It was so embarrassing because I felt like everyone that I know is going to watch me fail miserably. And I was really embarrassed about it, but I did really want to do it. And so I did this for a whole year and a half. And every week it was such a struggle because I didn't know where I wanted this channel to go. I would post videos about mothering. And then I realized I'm not passionate about mothering. I have one child. I don't know even what I'm talking about. I can't post just about mothering. I'm, I'm not even excited about mothering. So then it was like home hacks. Well, the problem is I have like two home hacks. So I only have two videos. And then it was like remodeling. We can do a remodeling channel, but then I have to change the name of my channel. So I did a couple videos on the remodel. And then it was like, I'll talk about marriage. And then I only have so many tips on marriage because I've been married for, you know, two years. And then it was like, um, I'll start sharing, you know, insecurity and those type of things and try and connect with like the younger girls. And it was just so fresh and it was so hard because I did not, I literally could not find one topic I could consistently speak about that was me, that I had enough I could share on, that I felt like wasn't having to leave out other parts of my life that I really loved, that I was super excited about, that I was trying to learn and improve in, and yet I can't share all those because then I won't be able to connect with anyone on my channel because I'll be speaking to like 500 different people about different things. And so for an entire year and a half, my channel went nowhere. It was really frustrating, it was really hard. And yet at the same time, through it all, I fell in love with creating videos. I really did. I fell in love with the whole process, how creative it let me be, learning to connect with people through a camera. And so despite the fact that at the end of a year and a half, I think I had 252 subscribers. And I felt like 
it had been a complete failure as far as when people were looking at my channel, what they would see, I didn't want to give it up. And I decided to keep doing it after that year. I decided that, you know what, this is really fun. I'm really loving this. And I felt like now, looking back, I'm so grateful my channel didn't grow very fast because I didn't know who it was that I wanted to speak to. And so people would have came to my channel and maybe they would have come to watch a remodeling video and find out that I don't post any more remodeling videos for the rest of the year. And so I'm really thankful now, looking back, because I had an entire year and a half, and I still do because my channel's not very large, where I've just been able to really figure out how it is that I wanna speak, what it is that I wanna share, who it is that I'm trying to connect with, what type of relationships I wanna build, and at the time I was just lost in this mess of just trying to learn what it was that I wanted to do. So about a year and a half in, I still had no direction. I still didn't know where I wanted to take the channel. I tried to take it a lot of different directions and wasn't seeing success in any of them. And my videos would on average get about 30 views a week, a new video would. And um, during this time, I had had the baby. We had kind of finished up the house and I was just really starting to fall in love with creating a home and fall in love with being a mother and fall in love with really embracing being a homemaker rather than resisting it, rather than finding it an insecurity or an aggravant to myself. And so I ended up creating this video and I think it was called Three Lies That Homemakers Believe Video. And I posted this video really not thinking much of it, thinking it would just be another one of these videos. It's kind of this random topic I talk about once in a while. I post this video and I think within a week it had like a thousand views, which was crazy compared to what I had experienced. And all of a sudden I was getting all these subscribers and within a month I had gone from having 250 subscribers to like 500 subscribers, which isn't much. but when in the past you've maybe gotten 20 or 30 subscribers a month, it feels like a lot. And I realized there's a demand for this. This is actually something I'm becoming passionate in myself. This is something that encompasses everything I am passionate about. It was the most crazy experience. So I'm gonna leave the video here and next week share with you part two because it gets better. So I hope you enjoyed this part one. I also want to reassure you that now my goal for this channel is not to build up an audience to just publish a book. If I don't ever publish a book, this channel would have still been a success because I have connected with all of you through it and I am so thankful for that. So I can't wait to share with you part two. I hope this wasn't too boring and I'll see you in my next video next week. Bye!